This video shows an idiopathic macular hole treated with a pars plana vitrectomy. At first, the anterior vitreous and the vitreous core are addressed. Next, we go down to the optic disc to perform a posterior hyaloid detachment. Here, we can actually see the vice ring, which implies a complete vitreous detachment from around the optic disc. In the nasal quadrant, it's possible to see a wave-shaped image, as the posterior hyaloid is being pulled up with the vitrector using high vacuum settings. Once a complete PVD is achieved, brilliant blue dye is injected to improve the visualization of the ILM. We can notice that there is an epiretinal membrane covering the macula, since it is not stained with the brilliant blue dye. We start the peeling by making a pinch on the epiretinal membrane to create a flap. Next, we grab this flap and proceed with the peeling in a circumferential fashion. We are using a train through gauge asymmetric retina forceps, specially designed for this purpose. Multiple grasps are commonly necessary in this part of the surgery. In this case, there is a thick and sticky membrane all over the macula, so we carefully remove it paying special attention to the borders of the hole. We don't want to put too much traction on its edges, in order to avoid intraoperative complications. So nice and easy, this adherent epiretinal membrane is successfully peeled off. After that, brilliant blue dye is utilized once again. Now we can actually see a flap of the ILM in the superior border of the hole. The peeling is once again made in a circumferential manner, just like we would in a routine capsularexis. A contact viewing system is being used here. When we are addressing the macula, we put on a direct contact lens, which we believe can really enhance the visualization of the ILM, and thus can be very handy in this step. As said before, multiple grasps are usually needed to maintain the vector forces necessary to perform a round-shaped peeling. It's interesting to see the removed membrane on the tip of the forceps. Now, using a soft tip cannula, we mechanically approximate the borders of the hole. We think this maneuver may help its closure. The peripheral retina is checked under scleral indentation and finally a fluid air exchange is performed. The patient is left with perfluor propane in the vitreous cavity and is oriented to maintain a face-down position for 7 days in the post-top period.